Judge, the defendant's been charged with multiple felony strangulation domestic violence counts. I have no doubt we'll be adding more counts. We just have to nail down the dates and times that other um, violations have happened. But we wanted to get this warrant out as quick as possible because we're extremely concerned about the victim's safety in this case. Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have a clip for you from Magistrate Hillary Braley at the 14B District Court in Michigan. She's got a defendant in her courtroom, and he doesn't seem like he's a very nice guy. Not at all. But I don't want to give it away. Here's the clip. Calling case number 24FB106. Three, this is the people of the state of Michigan versus Scott Cassidy Hammock. Please state your name for the record, sir. Scott Cassidy Hammock. Okay. So, Mr. Hammock, criminal complaint has been filed against you. It alleges that on or about and between the dates of July 9th, 2021 through January 16th, 2024, that you did at the locations of 940 Holmes Road, Apartment 4, and or 825 Place, Apartment 11. Uh, you did make an assault upon Tara Stinson by strangulation or suffocation. This first count is also known as assault with intent to do great bodily harm, less than murder, or by strangulation. Do you understand that count? Yes, Your Honor. That is a felony with a maximum penalty of up to 10 years in jail, a $5,000 fine with court costs or both. Do you understand that penalty? Yes, Your Honor. Count two alleges that you did make an assault upon Tara Stinson by strangulation or suffocation. Again, that is also known as assault with intent to do great bodily harm, less than murder, or by strangulation. You understand that second count? Yes, Your Honor. This is also a felony with a maximum penalty of up to 10 years in jail, a $5,000 fine with court costs, or both. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. Count three. You did make an assault upon Tara Stinson by strangulation or suffocation. Again, assault with intent to do great bodily harm, less than murder, or by strangulation, which is a felony with a maximum penalty of up to 10 years in jail, a $5,000 fine with court costs or both. You understand that third count? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and count four charges that you did make an assault or an assault and battery upon Tara Stinson, an individual with whom you have a child in common and or a resident or former resident of your household and or an individual with whom you had a dating relationship. That is a second offense notice, which means that you were previously convicted of assaulting or assaulting and battering a spouse, former spouse, or individual with whom you had a dating relationship or a child in common or a resident or former resident of your household. And that was on or about February 15th, 2011. So do you understand the count four, otherwise known as domestic violence? Yes, Your Honor. And because that is a second offense notice, that is a misdemeanor with a maximum penalty of up to one year in jail and a $1,000 fine with court costs or both. So you understand that potential penalty? Yes, yes Your Honor. Okay. The court wants to advise you that you have the right in this case to remain silent, and that's because anything that you say, whether orally or in writing, can be used against you in court. You have the right to be represented by an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney on your own, then at your request. And if you qualify, the court will appoint one at public expense. And that is why Attorney Meyer is here today. Yes, you have the, thank you. Sorry. You have the right to have an attorney represent you at all stages of these court proceedings. That is before, during, and after trial. And if any questioning were to take place by a police officer, you have the right to have an attorney with you before any questioning begins. The charges filed against you in this case are considered felonies. Therefore, you have the right to a preliminary examination, which must be scheduled within 21 days. 
A preliminary examination is an actual hearing held before a judge where the prosecution must present sufficient testimony and evidence to the court to establish two things. One is that there is probable cause to believe that a crime or crimes have been committed. And second, that there is probable cause to believe that you committed those crimes. It's a hearing to determine whether or not the case is strong enough to go to trial. If the court finds those things to be true, then the case will be bound over that is transferred to circuit court, which is where your actual trial will take place. Do you understand all that? Yes, ma'am. Before the preliminary examination takes place, the court will schedule a probable cause conference, and that is an opportunity for your attorney and the prosecutor to meet to discuss your case for any possible resolution or address any issues that are present in the case. Your probable cause conference is set for February 15th, 2024 at 9 a.m. That will be at the 14A1 District Court in courtroom C. Do you understand all of that? Is, it, is that the one downtown Ann Arbor or is that the one above the county or at the county jail? It's the one. Okay, I, I, I just want to get it. No, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> The last thing the court is going to do now is set a bond. Bonds are set in all cases, and the purpose is two things, to assure appearance for all future court dates and for the protection of the public. And to that effect, Attorney Blanche, do you wish to address bond at this time? Yes, Your Honor. Jessica Blanche, lead domestic violence prosecutor on behalf of the people. Judge, the defendant's been charged with multiple felony strangulation domestic violence counts. I have no doubt we'll be adding more counts. We just have to nail down the dates and times that other um, violations have happened. But we wanted to get this warrant out as quick as possible because we're extremely concerned about the victim's safety in this case. We're asking for a $500,000 bond in this case. GPS tether on release. A no-go to a no-contact with Tara, Mason, and David Stinson. Um, we had the fugitive apprehension team go out and get the defendant because we were afraid that once he found out that the victim had come to the police after years of abuse, that he would come get her because he has sent threatening text messages and has called her threatening her. He told her that if he ever, if she ever, ever reports to the police that he would kill her. So we are extremely concerned. I'm also concerned about his history he has prior domestic violence on his, on his history. He also has multiple CSC charges on his history that he just was released from parole on, which I don't even think he's compliant on those charges for the sex offender registry because where he's found and where, his, where he's residing right now, it does not match up to where he has reported on the registry. So I have high concerns about this defendant. So I'm asking for a $500,000 bond and all of the other domestic violence standard con conditions. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Attorney Meyer? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, first, as a preliminary matter, um, Andrew Meyer, on behalf of Scott Hammock, I can uh, waive any further reading uh, any stand to be Okay, thank you. The court accepts that he's standing mute to the charges at this time. You may proceed with. Thank you. Um, so, with respect to Bond here, uh, I did provide the court with an address on George Place. I did kind of want to. Uh, they assuage any concerns regarding that address. It's my understanding uh, from speaking with Mr. Hammock that the alleged victim no longer is living there, even though that's listed as the uh, alleged venue. For, uh, there's, there's two addresses there, one was the George Place address. And it's my understanding that the alleged victim is no longer residing there. So if he were to be released, I believe that could be a, a safe place uh, where he could live. He would be living with his mother. Um, Mr. Hammock tells me that um, he has um, several children. I think he says a total of five children who are still under the age of 18. Um, they're all currently residing with um, their mother. And um, he is he does have a good relationship with them all and they're providing support to the extent that he's able to. Um, he does have a job. Uh, he's worked at a Mr. Pizza on eCourse for the last four months. Um, he's making some money, but a, a bond in the amount states are requesting here uh, would be not makeable to him. So I'm asking the court to consider a more reasonable bond under conditions. Um, he also suffers from some back pain, and he indicates to me that he is uh, 10 years sober from alcohol, um, which has a trend that's been over a decade. Uh, all things being said, I, I wouldn't have any objection to, um, I think in the state's bond request, they had mentioned a GPS tether or home confinement. I, I think that's something that 
Mr. Hammock would be agreeable to so that he can continue to work, uh, continue to support his mother and his children, um, and certainly allow this to kind of play out in the court as ever, however it might be appropriate. But um, I do believe he'll be uh, not at light risk. And if the uh, GPS tether is put in place, I think that could uh, address any potential concerns regarding uh, the safety of the election. Okay, thank you. We'll set bond with the following conditions. You are not to use or possess drugs, alcohol, or correction. You are not to use or possess alcohol, marijuana, or illegal drugs. You are to report to community corrections within 24 hours of release for drug and alcohol testing. You would need $12 and a photo ID. You are not to leave the state of Michigan without the court's permission. You are not to possess or purchase a firearm, ammunition, or other dangerous weapons. You are not to assault, terrorize, frighten, intimidate, threaten, harass, molest, or stalk anyone, and specifically Tara Mason or David Stinson. You are not to have any contact with Tara Mason or David Stinson. And when the court says no contact, what the court means is no first person contact, no contact via telephone, through phone calls, text messages, emails, social media, the internet of any kind, nor third party contact. You are not to go anywhere near Tara Mason or David Stinson. You are not to violate any other criminal laws. You are to personally appear for any and all court dates and other dates as set for you by the court. That first date being February 15th, 2024. Prior to release, you are to be equipped with a GPS tether. At this time, the court is setting a bond of $500,000 cash or surety. The bond and the conditions will be placed in the law enforcement information network that is lean, and that means that any police officer can easily find out about the bond and those conditions. And if they have reason to believe that the bond or conditions have been violated in any way, they have a right to immediately arrest you. You will then be held for a bond violation hearing in front of a judge. And if the judge finds that you have violated a condition, then they have the authority to revoke the bond and set a brand new one. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Nothing else from the attorneys. No, thank you, Judge. Judge, I just had one question. Um, the date we're setting was uh, February 15th, is that right? Correct. Is the court able to give them the uh, February 8th date, or is that just going to be too soon? Is that going to be something to be those to be held? Okay, no, we were not given that as an option. Just wanted to see. Thank you. No, that is the February 15th date at 9 a.m. Mr. Um, Your Honor, may I just briefly address Mr. Hammock? Um, it's critical you stay off the telephone while you're in the jail. So no phone calls about uh, discussing anything about the case. They all will be recorded. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Thank you. And Mr. Hammock, if you don't have anything else for the court you are free to stand up and tell the jail that you are finished so so i'm i'm remanded in custody until the 15th until my court hearing correct or the um, five hundred thousand dollar dollar bond is posted attorney meyer I, we couldn't hear you judge i'm sorry it i was can you address your client's concerns Oh, um, your bond's 500000 with the conditions the judge outlined. So if you're unable to post, we will remain in custody. Okay.
Well, it sounds like they've got some serious evidence on this guy. They, they've, and they must. I mean, with all the threats that he's made, hopefully the woman, you know, re saved all the phone messages, saved all the text messages. Hopefully she did that. And this guy is a creep. So I'm glad he got a half a million dollar bond. Surprising, but I'm, I'm glad. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.